So hello everyone, I'd like to start off by thanking you for joining Citrus Global's first webinar. Uh, apologies about the bad quarantine haircuts on show. I'm sure most, most people can relate to that in these uh, challenging times. Uh, but this is the first of what will be a series of webinars uh, with the main purpose to discuss different topics that will share insights and experiences from highly talented IT professionals within Germany. So discussing things like the impact of COVID-19, uh, the effect it's had on people, teams, different organisations and the IT industry as a whole, really. So it will hopefully help some of you, you know, we're moving forward to learn from other people's positive experiences, take them on board and also their mistakes as well. Uh, but we've got two key speakers today. And the first one is Marcus Laura from Accenture in Munich. And the second is... Stain Stevens from Also Energy in Berlin. So these guys will run you through a presentation. Um, we're going to keep everyone else on mute throughout throughout the call just to prevent any background noise. And we're going to have a Q and A session at the end. So between each speaker, we're, we're going to have a short poll, like a few questions that everyone can answer, it's like yes or no, and we'll reveal those results towards the end. So then finish up with a Q and A session. So. If there are any questions that you've got, feel free to type them out uh, in the Q&A box, which you should see at the bottom of your screen. So that'll be located down there. And we'll run through those at the end too. Okay. But first, I'd like to introduce uh, Marcus, if, you, if you'd like to take the lead, Marcus. Yeah. Hello, everybody. Um, let me switch to my uh, presentation here. And uh, share... So I hope you can can see uh, the other one. Um, I think you see my other display. Sorry for that. Um, so now. So. Does it look good for you? I hope. So my name is. Markus Lohr, I'm from Accenture. Um, it's, it's rather not the, the case that I'm talking as Accenture here right now because um, I think this problem um, or what, what we are facing with uh, uh, Corona and COVID-19 uh, applies to a lot of companies at the end. Um, I'm basically talking here um, from the perspective uh, of a delivery lead. Uh, so what what happened to me and my team um, and uh, i can i can share my knowledge based on our uh, engagement with a big uh, company uh, that is um, in the military and defense uh, and space uh, section and um, we are facing a lot of uh, difficulties here uh, when you have to deliver a uh, private cloud platform uh, from the home office uh, a little bit to me, I'm born in uh, 1982. I call myself a professional nerd um, because I'm with IT since I was young. My father introduced me to uh, computers and at that time basic, uh, very early, uh, and I was doing a lot of stuff. Um, I was even programming a little bit my, my own games, uh, tic-tac-toe and so on, when I was a kid. Um, and I was Accenture since uh, 2016. Before Corona, um, everything was pretty easy. Uh, we were managing a, a private cloud stack on premise. Uh, we do basically everything from infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and software as a service um, to the in house customers. Uh, we are responsible basically from every uh, from from down from the network cable up to the business services and everything in between um, we we have the challenge that this is a disconnected platform due to security reasons so it's always a challenge to access this platform and we have different uh, different um, I, uh, yeah security measures in place uh, so that we can digitally connect to the environment but 
we, we can't really push data into it or something. So um, it's really just command that can be uh, pushed into the cloud uh, or a, a visual presentation can be uh, sent back. So if you familiar familiar with uh, Citrix, you know they have good measures in place for that to, to have a very uh, secure access to, to environments. My team are basically six people. We are in two rooms uh, with a door in between that's basically always open. So we can hear each other, uh, we can, can listen to, to calls uh, and maybe jump in for a second and maybe share a number or whatever. So we can help each other very easily. We, we are on site from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Um, over the normal weekdays. Uh, but we always have the eye on the system. Uh, usually we have some kind of remote device um, that we hand over to, to someone in the team that has a secured uh, connection uh, to, to see the yeah, logs and uh, announcement from the systems that can come up like I lost link or uh, disk is running uh, um, full and, and so on some metrics uh, we can, can get out of the system to have a feeling or uh, some facts about the system. Every day, I a, as I uh, mentioned here, we have a small room just next to us that we use for a simple gathering to celebrate a birthday, but also to have the daily, for example, uh, what we use to have a customer meeting uh, that we use for outbreak sessions to, to say, okay, let's, uh, discuss a certain topic um, uh, in in more depth, for example. So that's very easy. We do a fifteen minutes uh, fifteen minutes daily um, where we discuss everything we did since the last daily and what we are planning to do today and until the next daily. Um, it's very strict, so we usually say, "Okay, um, that's I did, that's I do," and maybe I have a a little question. Uh, did someone took care of ordering this and that, or did someone have a look at this and then they shake their head or whatever? They can also ask questions, but the questions must be in the way that I answer with yes or no. So um, close questions are the ones that are here, very important. Um, we have a lot of walls and since we are sitting in a some kind of container village uh, all the walls are ma magnetic so we can put charts everywhere and put these sticky foils everywhere where we basically do uh, brainstorming and uh, yeah, create new solutions or whatever and you you can always look around and, and see them uh, that's very nice if the, the chart is in the other room you just walk over uh, you have a quick chat with the guy uh, and uh, usually it's, it's very easy and fast to discuss topics. Um, the shift plan here is very strict. So uh, two peoples are there in the morning, two peoples are there in the evening and in between the guys are coming in uh, as the buses are arriving basically. Um, and who is going to the uh, food court is basically also depending on who came first, who, who goes last, um, very easy, but strict. Always two people have to be in the office to uh, look at the screens and uh, monitor the solution. When, when COVID-19 uh, was in the press around December, we already figured out we have to make sure that we are prepared um, if something like uh, uh, this, this town in, in, in China uh, gets isolated. If that's happened to us as well, then we need to be prepared. So we, we started in January already um, to uh, check that we all have access uh, via VPN, that we had all the approvals uh, to access uh, certain networks and uh, secured zones. We even checked the personal uh, yeah, situation of all our colleagues. Uh, so one guy was in the shared apartment and we decided uh, that since he is out of town, um, he can stay in Munich 
in a shared in a um, um, yeah apartment uh, rented apartment um, over the time um, when we have to be in isolation uh, if it comes up uh, we checked that we have uh, a good internet connection that everyone had a, had at least one big screen at home uh, so that we can really have two at least two screens uh, so the one on the laptop and the uh, additional one to, to have everything um, visually uh, presented because we are usually having one screen for the monitoring system open uh, and one screen we are working on. And very close to the end, we realized it might be the case that we also have to consider a good chair and a good table at the end. Um, so we took care of that as well. On the organizational uh, part, we had to um, make sure that we have the approval from the IT SEC department that we are allowed here to work from home on the production systems because uh, in our case it's very crucial because the, the client has the uh, policy that you are only allowed to work on production systems if you are on site. But for Corona, COVID-19, uh, there was a new uh, policy that came in place and replaced the old one at least uh, for a certain amount of time. We, we double checked every redundant uh, access to the cloud. So we, we have multiple ways of accessing this uh, platform, but we made sure that even these single connections and uh, different ways of accessing the cloud uh, will be redundant at the end. We implemented a fallback solution to dial in. Um, and that's the very unique and very funny thing. Um, <laughs> it's, it's a dial in uh, on demand, but the on demand is that we have a fancy red cable uh, that needs to be plugged in a, a socket that we uh, uh, painted red as well. <laughs> And uh, we gave it the instruction and the access uh, to the facility management <clears throat> that under uh, uh, certain circumstances, uh, they please have to put in that cable. Uh, this cable will give us access to uh, the out of band um, systems uh, from a secured zone that can only be accessed uh, from yeah, basically my computer. Uh, so that if everything breaks down, if we can't access the cloud from the normal way, we have a fall back here with a special cable. And uh, the the uh, policy here, and that the uh, special agreement with ITSEC, is also that uh, the facility management has to remove the cable after two hours. If not, we have to come on site um, and yeah, resolve the issue uh, from on site. And then it happened. Then it happened. Sunday night, there, come, they, there was a call uh, that uh, no one is allowed to access the site beginning of Monday, tomorrow. And we still, we still had these artifacts that we are working on, right? So we are an operational team. So incidents can happen. Problem solving needs to go on. We do implementation of new uh, solutions. We do development uh, for uh, a better monitoring system that is uh, deeply integrated into a system that don't offer a normal um, operation um, monitoring. So how do you do that from remote? How can you access uh, a data center from remote? How can you change hardware and so on. So that was kind of a challenge. Um, and we basically had also the, the normal challenge. So not always a stable connection. You may know or you have experienced that as well that now when all the people are at home, the internet connection of your company is a bottleneck. So how can we make sure that at least the operational teams can have a stable connection. And it took a few days for the client to establish that and give us dedicated uh, dial-in connection endpoints to, to have a stable connection, at least for 
teams like us. You need to request a slot needed to enter the data center uh, so that you are not conflicting with someone else because only one person is uh, allowed per visit. You are not allowed to do hardware moves because some of the servers are uh, having a weight of 100 and more kilograms. Um, so you need at least four people for that. Uh, there was a strict uh, change policy that came in place that only changes are allowed if you have more than two people that could do the change and if it's not business critical uh, or if it's business critical then you have to provide a rock solid fallback solution. The other challenge that's more on um, on the personal uh, thing is you, you can't see the mood of your colleagues. If you are in one room, you can see if they're smiling or not. But now, most of the time we, we communicated over chat, uh, we, we did a phone call and you can't see if they're smiling. You have to really listen. You have to listen to every single word. If it's a word that is normal or maybe uh, based on a bad mood right now. You can't hear when the other are talking over problems that might be fixed very easily if you if you know the reason for it already because you're working maybe on something that is causing this problem on the other end, so side effects. So we were starting to have a, a one day WebEx um, that everyone could join. So we, we opened that WebEx um, and it was always open and the people were ca uh, coming in and uh, dropped out whenever they want uh, just to have a bit of background noise sometimes to, to listen if someone is talking to someone else about a certain topic. Sometimes we chatted uh, on the side channel, uh, hey, join the call, we can just discuss it here and then we saw okay that it might be something storage related so let's pick the one uh, who is managing the storage right now so that he can join us as well and it was a coming and going that was really funny and we realized oh there is so much stuff on our walls um, that we now can't see that we can't read so I went to the IT security department again and to the uh, security department of the client and asked for a permission to do photographs. So I made photographs with a device from the client. I uploaded them to our Wiki page uh, so that everyone can see it. Um, it was kind of a challenge uh, because also coming on site was a bit of a pain. I needed approval from my company. I needed approval from the client. It was interesting but it was possible at the end so we still have the same things in place they're just a little bit different now still six people all over germany ops time 7 a.m to 7 p.m still the same only that that remote device is not needed right now because we can access the the environment from our customer laptops in this case we have now multiple meeting rooms where we meet. We have WebEx, we have Teams, we have the Jabber account. So we are always using the, the channel that is the most appropriate right now and uh, causes uh, the less amount of uh, bandwidth. Um, our daily is now 70 minutes uh, because we do a lot of discussion really in that daily uh, to, to get things forward. Um, we we already ha always had a central wiki page so we have an open project uh, server for ourselves where we collect information where we uh, handle our internal tickets to kind of a, a task list for us um, but now it became really our central source of knowledge at the end we, we uh, document every single move we do so that someone else can read it in case we are not available due to problem with the connectivity or because we get sick for example the time schedule is now different it's not based anymore on bus times and uh, uh, food court uh, hours it's now based on how can i keep the motivation of my team so 
two guys are basically coming early, then having a long siesta in the middle of the day, and then they join again and stay longer, um, because that's now possible and that keeps the motivation high. Uh, team calls every uh, third week. That's also something we don't. So, so usually we are sitting, you know, in the kitchen or we're walking around to the like, customer side, the campus, and we are talking about stuff like, I did a road bike trip, or uh, we, I was uh, doing climbing, and uh, what is new on the computer market, or whatsoever. And now it's always business, business, business. So we introduced that team call. Monday evening, 19 o'clock, so after the official hours, uh, and we're having a beer or wine. The other day we had pizza, virtual, of course, <laughs> but everyone was eating pizza. That was fun. Um, so we, we, we presented all our pizza in the cameras and said, ah, okay, you're a vegetarian, oh, funny, uh, and so on. Uh, it was nice. I do a lot of calls now, uh, personal calls with my teammates uh, to, to really ask personal questions uh, because I want to know their feelings, their mood. Uh, and if I experience that, that they have an issue right now, a personal one or uh, work-related, I can, I can basically also consider that on the next day. So I don't have to push them hard uh, to get uh, my, my business service up and running uh, that is in the making, the, in the implementation. Incidents and problem solving is something else, but everything around implementation and everything around development is slowed down a bit because you can't collaborate anymore that easy. And we gave our team a lot more freedom uh, to do uh, stuff that keeps the motivation high, doing sports, going out for a walk. We even have, uh, you know, Komoot, that's like, um, Strava or, or something like Garmin has also in place where you can uh, share your sport achievements with others. So we have that group now and we see if someone is going out for a walk and we challenge each other. Ah, I did two kilometers yesterday and I did 20 and uh, this weekend I climbed up the hill and so on. Uh, and based on these side activities, we also, um, yeah, created a very good re relationship here uh, to, to stay motivated and um, keep the business running. Yeah, that's, that's all for, for me. Jack, I don't know if you want to jump in. Hello, hello. Yeah. Hi there, so thank you very much for that, Marcus. That was, uh, that was brilliant, very insightful. And I know you obviously took us on, on a bit of a journey there and I'm sure a lot of people, you know, may have experienced things similar and obviously had a bit of a journey themselves. So, you know, I've, I've certainly experienced something, a bit of a journey too. So, and, uh, you know, some very interesting points about how you had to interact, well, adjust with the interactions of part of the team when working remotely. And then you've been doing group pizza nights and, and you're competing with each other uh, in like sports competitions you probably weren't doing that beforehand when you were working on site yeah. together so and i suppose there could be ways one of my questions is going to be um do you feel that you sort of got to know some of your team members a little bit better since working remotely do you got, got to know a little bit more about them since moving off site potentially uh definitely i mean um, on, on work, it's really like you, you're going to work and that's your, your time frame, basically, where you do everything around that work. You know? Make yeah. business value at the end. Uh, for the customer and, uh, well, also for my so company. But, um, but it's kind of, yeah, it's, it's not forbidden, but that people don't want to talk about private stuff. Mm. Um, and the only private stuff is what you can see how they work so what the this this resource in terms of what is the um uh yeah let's say what the client is, is uh, buying here uh, can deliver um but if the personal uh, life is not 
in in the picture here you you will never have a good relationship to your colleagues here and yeah. you can see that when you are at work that they you know look a bit sad or whatever uh, and then you can maybe challenge this and say hey how can i help you and so on but if you can't see that if you have not uh, this this insight visual insight uh, then you need to come up with something else to get this insight and to to share more of your private life here is then the the indirect way of getting these knowledge and then making uh, yeah changes on the way of uh, uh, yeah yeah managing yeah. them okay yeah great well if anyone else has got any more questions i think we'll, we'll work for marcus if you could write them in the q a or in the chat and we can run through those at the end um, next i'd like to introduce our next keynote speaker uh stain stevens from also energy uh, in berlin uh, are you with us are with us Stane? yes i am thank you thank you Fantastic. very much i hope you can can hear me yes. uh, i hope also uh, you can see my uh, scratchy uh, shared screen here yes yeah they can yeah i'll leave you to it okay thank you uh, michael uh, jack thank you for uh, inviting me um i am stan stevens uh, i am located in berlin and i am uh, the cto of also energy and also energy is a monitoring company located in in the us uh, but also has a subsidiary here in berlin and uh, we provide scada for uh, renewable energy power plants and with scada i mean we provide the hardware we provide the software we provide the control we provide the cloud we provide analytics and we provide the application with which the customer uh, that can be an O&M or an asset owner can supervise his assets uh, and determine uh, whether or not maintenance need to be performed. Um, I've joined uh, Skytron slash slash also energy in 2017. Uh, before that, I was at SMA, that's a large uh, inverter manufacturer. At that time, uh, still the biggest one uh, in the world um so i've been around within the pv market so the photovoltaic market for 10 years right now so consider my talk within the space of solar um uh, and um not not beyond solar so my talk will be in the same ballpark um as marcus's talk um, i will say how we go how we went into the COVID 19 mode um and how we remained there and, and how the handling was and then how we also exiting the COVID 19 mode because now we are slowly repealing everything that we have uh, took into place and going to a sort of normal uh, kind of mode and then i also want to to shed a few points on what the impact will be on the solar market uh, from my perspective so I'm not um, uh, uh, speaking for someone else it's just from my point of view um, my impression is because I, I'm in the management uh, of the, the company um, and for me and also for my colleague uh, the CEO for us it was really learning by doing um, we started implementing and focusing on what we need to do for a company to enable uh, to enable our employees to, to work from home and to, su to support also our customer base. We had to learn everything from scratch. We also appointed someone who um, looked into what, um, in what, what we needed to do in order to comply with, with all the rules there are in, in, in Germany. And we basically had three sources which we uh, turned to that first was the the overall uh, country uh, uh, government the local government and uh, uh, robert koch uh, institute and those three sources we always went back to those three sources because at the beginning of the corona um, virus a pandemic uh, a lot of our employees were kind of 
anxious of whatever is going to happen and they were uh, they wanted to have um, really harsh measures and and they practically were <laughs> running out of the company uh, so to speak and we always had to go back to what are the facts what is the government stating and what are are our uh, obligations as a company towards our employees and our customers. And we had a lot of discussions, a lot of town halls with our uh, employees to calm everybody down and to take step-by-step -step, uh, measures towards uh, a complete off-taking of our company towards the home office. This, is, this was not uh, a complete off-taking that was not possible uh, for us, but we had a, a schedule in place where we had a rotational system uh, where different departments had um, two people in the office and everybody else offloaded to uh, the home base. For that, we also had an official writing uh, generated so that if the police would stop people on the street, that they could prove that they were uh, allowed or that uh, they were allowed to move into the office so that they're not just wandering around the streets uh, without a purpose. And the big chunk uh, that we battled with as an employer uh, was uh, to get the right balance between the contracts, the laws. Also for some companies, uh, short time work that is uh, like uh, partial uh, off time for employees where the state uh, gets, uh, 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 does uh, compensate for uh, the employees not working. It's like a bridge period. And also our company agreements that we have with the works council and a fair home office regulation. Um, because there are social uh, standards we, uh, we want to meet and some people do have a family. Some people have uh, children that are older that they can take care, of, uh, care for themselves. And some people don't have any children. So we wanted to make sure that we capture everything and the regulation for home office that we captured that in a company agreement in cooperation with the Works Council. So that took um, quite some time um, because you also have to uh, make sure that if you're sending people into home office, the place where they're going to be sitting at home needs to be safe uh, it, because that becomes their working environment. And that can imply that, they're, that you, you have to do cost in order to create an environment for uh, your employee uh, to work safe and to like like a share or a, or a, a lighting lighting or um, whatever um, and that was was a difficult task um, my, that was my personal opinion we also had to have IT um, in place so screens um, uh, laptops everything VPN uh, keys uh, for everybody in the company, mobile phones for everybody who needs it, uh, so that connectivity is uh, assured. And uh, we also had to check uh, if we could do that uh, within the framework of our insurance that we have. We had obviously, as an employer, we had fear for reduced efficiency and um, uh, which will turn out, uh, fortunately for us, uh, not uh, the case. For the employee, employee side, um, there was a very strict daily organization uh, put into place. Um, we had the lock that we have been uh, using uh, an Atlassian tool chain for a while now, since two years or three years, um, and that everything is handled over a ticketing system. We use a confluence that's like wiki uh, sort of thing. Uh, where everything that we do and uh, that we do a research on is documented. So with that perspective, we had nothing else to do. It, was, uh, it has uh, an IP address that is reachable from uh, outside. Uh, so we're good to, to do that. And also our dailies that we did uh, could also be easily be done over uh, a Zoom meeting. 
the biggest problems that arised uh, was actually organizational problems at home for uh, how to manage a, a family. Kids are not going into the kindergarten. Uh, parents have to, uh, to, to balance between one parent uh, taking care of the kids, the other parent doing home office. But we all know that if kids are running around, it's, it's not an easy task to, to commit yourself to work, um, even if you want to. <laughs> it's, it's just, the, there's a lot of disturbance, a lot of noise in the background. And then obviously there comes a question of, okay, uh, with, with your time work uh, and, and who's, going to take, who's going to take care of the kids? Is the 50-50 or is it the one who brings, up, brings in the most money into a family? Is that person going to do the work and the other one is uh, trying to get short time work or uh, having off time? Uh, and then we run into um, a gender inequality problem, which I um, uh, will highlight just in a moment, uh, which makes it obviously that our, our society is still not in that position where we have gender equality. From the motivational perspective, I think uh, my opinion was what I get from my employees is that the motivation was very high. Everybody was very eager to go into home office to try something new. Um, home office is something that we previously have done on a sparse level. Uh, it was possible, but one should have uh, should have had a, a really good reason to do that. So for instance, um, children that need to be taken care of or someone who, uh, who is uh, depending uh, who needs to be t taken care of or, or something else. Um, well, our own police found out that the, the house work travel yeah, reduced to zero. Um, so one goes from the breakfast directly into work and uh, having lunch and well, working time become much shorter as it was in the past. One was also not so distracted as one is here uh, at work. Uh, and uh, you gained a lot of time uh, with family. I have a lot of employees that travel one hour to go to office, single trip. So they spend two hours a day just to come into the office. All of a sudden, two hours gained. And that is a huge impact on social life and family life. So that was an upside. Now, if we go to the steady state regime, now we prepared everything, uh, the office here for the people that were here. We marked all the floors uh, to indicate what the, what the exact spacing was that uh, was uh, put out by the government and the institutes. Uh, again, all, all over the time, we had to temper all the overreaction of the employees, that is, accompanies us with uh, even today uh, reducing the measures. We have to uh, calm down our employees, always returning back to the facts that were uh, stated by the Institute and by the government. Um, in, in this essence, everybody adopted very well. And I think it is proven that for, at least for our company, that home office is perfectly fine. And that also will lead to an, another kind of way of handling a home office within our company. And a, uh, an interesting side effect, and Marcus also addressed that, is that I, I noticed an improved communication throughout the whole company. Uh, we are because you don't see each other here, you get in, in the office. In the office, you get a false impression that you communicate quite often and, uh, and direct with each other. But it's the contrary is, is the fact, at least in our company. Now we are forced, we don't see each other on the floor. And you have to talk to each other to know what to do and uh, in, uh, for work. And you're forced to go to the dailies, you're forced to go to communicate with your team leader, you're forced to go uh, to communicate with, with the CTO, myself, and, and communication much improved over this corona period. 
There is, however, a small reduction in efficiency, but um, I would say it's negligible. It's, it's not uh, worth mentioning uh, much. We had an opportunity to train people. Uh, we had reduced work here in the office due to that our customers uh, could not go on site. And uh, for that, much of the project have been uh, delayed, freed up time for our employees, and therefore they could do some training, a documentation of work that has been done, but was not documented in, in Confluence. So we improved our documentation and we trained our people. On the side of employees, uh, they had also time to reflect because they had more time at home. And yeah, well, they got, uh, they got insight in how they're working uh, within our company. Some decided to, to go a different direction. Some decided or that they really liked that or that they wanted to go in a different direction within our company. So I've observed uh, a higher trend in people uh, wanted to talk about that than prior to the coronavirus. And also we are, we were forced due to Corona to search for different means to get in contact with the customer. And one of those was uh, obviously the, the web uh, seminars that, uh, that took off and uh, a lot of Zoom meetings took off and so on. Now, I, in the previous slide, I also uh, mentioned that I, for me, it struck the, that it made very clear to me that still in our society, gender inequality still exists and it's predominantly uh, the women that stay at home taking care of the kids. Although I have to say within our company, 30% uh, of all the, the men uh, also do uh, home office and take care of the kids because their wife needs need to be working. But still there's a, a huge imbalance in, in, in gender who takes care of the kids and who brings in the money. So um, I hope this will, after this coronavirus, we, we get, a, a big step closer to equality between uh, different genders. From the market perspective, uh, I see a, a large hesitation uh, uh, and lack of initiative uh, from our customer and uh, projects um, planners. The project get postponed, but fortunately not canceled. So that's a good thing. Um, our customers are not allowed to go on site. So there are no sites commissioned during this time. And as we are a global player, uh, we see this all over the globe. And there's an oversupply on webinars, uh, also from other providers or uh, hardware providers, as well as our customers that uh, offer additional services to other customers. Um, everybody reached out to webinars and, and so on. Uh, so that was interesting to see. Now, how do we get out of this uh, uh, COVID-19? We are reducing every uh, measure that we took so far. And on police find it difficult to hand over the privileges that they, that they now gained. So they have, um, uh, we're reducing home office. It, it is not so easy anymore to, to get home office done. We are more flexible on the home office as we were before but it's not that everybody per se can go into home office. We have this strict uh, social hierarchy uh, that, uh, that, we, that we follow. And that is also captured within um, our uh, company agreement, okay, agreements. Um, we obviously want to keep the improved communication. So we kept uh, the time slots where we get in contact with each other we still have to do the tempering of the overreaction to COVID-19 and possible uh, uplifting, uh, up, upliving of the COVID-19. Um, we have to go to all different uh, phases uh, of uh, home office outfacing, how to do that uh, lawfully, uh, returning to the home office, uh, returning the home office infrastructure, returning from the short time work and so on. 
And from a market perspective, I think we had, the market has rediscovered the electronic communication as a valid communication and not directly the direct communication between the customer and ourselves. Although that is still a very, uh, a very important factor, direct communication towards the customer to bond with the customer. But I see that the customers currently still are reluctant towards direct contact. And then an out an outlook to the what the PV market what the impact on the PV market looks like. I have my impression is impression is that the project that are currently or were scheduled are postponed but not cancelled. And obviously that will have reper repercussions on companies that have uh, that are low uh, on liquidity. So we will have a clean out of the market, uh, at least of the monitoring market, although I think the, the effects will be minor. I think the effects in, on the American market will be higher, but that is also due to other factors like government and so on. Um, then we, from the PV market industry out, we were already very high volatile market and we will bounce back. So uh, we have been through this multiple times, so we will bounce back. And under the radar, it is to be expected that the government will increase their, uh, their push for renewables, at least in Germany. It's, it's not already plain visible, but under the hood uh, talks are going on. And I expect there will be some push from the government for renewable energy as a sustainable energy uh, uh, for Germany at least, and I think also European wide. So with that, I want to conclude my presentation on what the effects were on my industry from my perspective. Thank you very much. So Jack? I okay, sorry, I was, I was still on mute there. Hi, thank you very much for that, Stain. That was uh, that was fantastic. Very good presentation. Thanks to both of you, really. Um, I mean, I, I've got a question for both of you. For, first of all, I think you've had a few Q and A's in in the box, which I can run through. But this is for for, for both. So, when things settle down with COVID nineteen, do you anticipate like the people within your respective teams to? I suppose, expect more remote working flexibility? For example, they may expect two days each week or do you think they'll be expecting to go back into the office five days a week as normal moving forward? Well, maybe I can comment on that. We have made it uh, clear from the beginning that uh, we will take action for home office during the COVID-19, but that afterward everything will uh, return as it was before. We yeah. covered that within uh, a company agreement together with the Works Council. And uh, there were also limit, these, were, uh, these uh, company agreements were on a limited time frame, So they run out at a certain time. Okay. I, that being said, I think I will handle it differently as I did in the past. I, I think I will handle home office more flexible as I did in the past, um, as I've seen that the working efficiency and also the communication did not suffer during this time. And so uh, we can, uh, with, with, uh, uh, I'm very confident, uh, confident that we can move towards more home office than we did in the past. Okay, great, thank you. What about yourself, Marcus, and, and your respective team? Yeah, for us, it's it's a, a challenge, let's say. So since the policy is in place that we are not allowed to work on collection systems from remote, there is uh, the, the challenge that you then have to divide your work a little bit. So if you are then remote, you are fine to work on some new developments, for example. Um, so if, you, if you're writing some automation scripts, for example, that are needed to yeah, bring up a new environment with, with some yeah, automated uh, tooling, then of course you can do that. You can test that at home. And then if you bring that into production, then you have to maintain it and maybe a change here and there something, then you have to be on site. But by 
basically um, dividing these two things, we might have the chance to um, have a benefit for all the um, uh, non-in-town resources to travel less. Maybe stay one week at home, two weeks uh, at the client side. So something like that. Uh, yeah. But yeah, still um, managing production systems based on the client policy needs to be on site. So okay, no, thanks. Yeah, thanks. So overall, a bit more flexibility, but back to normal in terms of going on site. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think we've got a poll to to add for everyone to be who's in the webinar. Michael Palmer, he he should send that out to you. It's just a few simple questions um, that should take place, and then okay. Great. So if everyone would like to answer those and we'll reveal the results at the end. And I think there's a few questions on, on the Q&A from um, Tobias. Um, the first one sorry for for stain do you think that the existing team will be able to handle the workload when all the delayed projects start yeah i was answering that question <laughs> just a second when you said but we can we can discuss it here uh in in public yeah uh yeah i think it, it's a difficult question i think there will be a queue definitely uh, however uh, we have to remember that our customers are in the same boat as as we are. They are also coming out of COVID uh, uh, nineteen, and they also have a queue. They also have personnel uh, send out home office, uh, sometimes temporary unemployed, and they also have to to restart again. So what we currently see is that it is very droplet wise that the work comes in. As long as that is the case, I think we're good to go. Otherwise, I think it's uh, for everybody uh, um, has to have this, this mindset that everybody is just catching up work and that there will be a queue. Uh, however, that will be leveled out, I think, in two or three months from now. Okay, fantastic. Thank you. Um, and then a, f a question for, for you, Marcus, off uh, Alexandru. Do you think that the Home Office remote will extend your possibility to recruit outside Germany in the closer time zones? Yeah, I already answered that. Um, oh, so sorry, you have. Sorry. <laughs> oh, good. Oh, good. <laughs> oh, good. That. Um, yeah, it's basically the, the, the same answer. So um, we, we might have the chance to bring other people in. Uh, that's, that's in general possible, not for this client. Um, here we, as I said, have the uh, policy, security policy that we have to follow. Uh, and there is another thing that uh, in, for this specific platform, we even have to be uh, German citizens uh, to, to manage it. So that's another difficult point. Okay, perfect. So I think all the, let me just check, I think all the, the questions have been answered. Uh, if anyone would like to add one before we wrap things up, um, I think while we're doing that, would, Michael, would you like to reveal the answers of the poll? So as, as we can see, the majority, well, three quarters, just over three quarters, have not been back into the office. And yeah, just over two thirds and not planning on going back into the office. Interesting one on the third for the, the economy to bounce back quickly. It's quite even that one, but uh, quickly, just, just about edging it. What, what are your two thoughts? Um, first of all, Marcus, what was your thoughts on, on, the, on those questions, one number three in particular? Well, I guess that um, it it's depends on the industry. Um, uh, I know that you know the 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 supply chains are sometimes very long. So if I look at the economy at a at a whole system, then I would say everything that is first row, second row, uh, will be click, uh, quickly recover. But then everything in the sec uh, third, fourth, or fifth row, then uh, they they will struggle a bit longer. So that. And, and I think these are the ones that 
have the most impact at the end on our economy uh, because of, yeah, they employ quite a lot of people. So they bring in a lot of salary uh, to the folks. And uh, so if they don't have a proper salary at the end, so the economy can't grow or be, uh, uh, yeah, come back. So uh, that's why I think it, it, it takes a bit longer. Yeah. And, and Stein, what about yourself? What did you vote for on that one there? Uh, on the on the third one, do you yes. expect? Uh, um, I think we will need uh, two two months from now. But I definitely, as I commented in the presentation, it will bounce back. And if the governments um, take the appropriate action, I think we will also have an overswinger uh, or an, an uplifting of this. So I I see the future uh, very positive. Yeah. Uh, also, do understand that I come from the solar industry where we had a lot of fluctuations also in the past, even without COVID-19. So. Yeah, okay. I appreciate the honesty and the honest answers there, guys. Uh, unless there's, I don't think there seems to be any more questions, but I'd like to thank, you know, you two guys, uh, Marcus and Stane, for, for presenting today. It's very much appreciated and very insightful and I've certainly learned a lot from it and I'm sure that the attendees will concur with that too. So thanks very much. You're cool. welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks. And uh, also thank you for, for the attendees and everyone taking part. It, it's much appreciated. So this is, we're going to do a series of these. Um, I think the next one's going to be next Thursday, uh, the, the 11th. And then following on from that, it'll be every fortnight or every month maybe because I appreciate there's, there's quite a few of these going on. But, yeah, it's a good opportunity to, to share insights and information and any, any sort of feedback, and it's very welcomed. So, yeah, I'd like, like to thank everyone again for, for being a part of it. And obviously, as you guys are all part of the first one, definitely going to be uh, remembered for sure. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Jack. No problem. Thanks, Michael. Yeah, thank you, Michael, Jack. Uh, thank you for uh, inviting us. No problem. It was a pleasure. Too. Pleasure, pleasure was all mine. So thank you very much. The video is recorded and we'll, we'll send it all out as well, whoever, whoever wants a copy. So, Okay. Well, for everyone, stay safe. Uh, enjoy the rest of the day and have a great finish to the week. And uh, we'll speak to you all soon, hopefully. Thank Bye. you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you.